am Masasa Lindewe Mbangeni. I am the fifth child of Mrs. Akele and the late Vuyani Mbangeni. I was born and bred in Port Elizabeth. And I, although a lot of people don't believe me, I was an incredibly, incredibly shy kid. And uh, my mother asked a friend of hers that she used to work with, who was very confident and out there, you know, what she could do to help me. And my mother took me to my first speech and drama school um, with my first acting teacher, Elizabeth Hansfield. And her studio was called the Woodcoat Studio, and I was about eight or nine. And uh, that's when I was introduced to the love of my life. And I remember going to Stetford's and stuttering and stammering through poems. The first poem I ever did was Old Billy Ricky. Old Billy Ricky sat in the well. Well, well, well. That's all I remember. <laughs> but I remember being standing at the Savoy Theatre in PE and being so scared and nervous, but knowing that I want to be an actor, not being able to express or, or understand this feeling inside of me because I stutter, I'm scared of people, I'm scared of being in large groups. When I get onto that stage, it's like all of that goes away and I feel incredibly happy. And so that's how I would narrate my story, particularly um, with this acting thing that has been uh, quite a large part of my life. A development to an actor is very important. However, I would not prescribe a, s a certain way because we all have different journeys. I mean, I would, I would um, compare it or say that the journey with acting is a similar journey uh, to however you find yourself to the divine. So many people may practice Islam, many people may practice Judaism, you may practice Christianity, Buddhism, but at the end of the day, we all find our way to love. Similarly, for me, with acting, there are people who can afford to go to school and so they go that journey. There are people who audition, audition, and audition because they have an innate gift and they go that journey. Um, and there are people that are just lucky and they go that journey. And um, there are people who have to put in the time and the work um, and the effort and that's also a journey. So I think we must be careful of being elitist and arrogant to say that there's only one way to to Mecca, there's several ways. Uh, however, I do believe in training. I do believe that as much as you may have a talent and a gift, it will always stand you in good stead to be able to find different ways to articulate that gift. And that's what training does. It shows you how to play on a drama, it shows how to play Greek texts, it shows you how to play Shakespearean texts. So, um, yeah. Development is important, but it's also trust your journey. I, mm -hmm. One can't prescribe a journey to someone because one's journey wasn't prescribed by anyone else other than the divine. So I would never want to do that to anyone. Oh. My alarm. <laughs> uh, literally my alarm. But what makes me wake up in the morning as an actor, I guess, it's the opportunity to be able to do this work again, as esoteric and airy-fairy as that sounds, that's the truth. Um, just the possibility of being awake, I mean, we take it for granted that we have time here, and we don't. And so waking up every day is an honor. So that's what makes me wake up in the morning, the excitement of living. Especially now that I'm a freelancer, every day is never the same. Um, you wake up and maybe you're going to spend the day reading and you wake up and maybe you're going to spend the day in a rehearsal room and maybe you're going to spend the day on set somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's just the possibility of a day. Mm. Well, I live in the city and my mornings usually start at about 5.30 when I hear um, prayers from mosque um, filtering through to where I stay. And um, I just love the idea of why people are praying, um, sending these prayers up to heaven. I get to hear them en route to God. So that's what morning means to me. As you asked me that, what does acting mean to me? Like my tears well up in my eyes. Such a drama queen. Um, you know, I know it's gonna sound cheesy but indulge me but acting to me it means life it means um 
breathing. I mean, the word drama is taken from the Greek word dramos, which means like life or of life. And the origins of theater or modern theater, as we know it, is from the Greeks. So if we use that as a departure point, then to answer your question, for me, acting is life. It is trying to reflect life as honest as possible. It is a bit um, selfish in a way because you get to heal your own nonsense and find catharsis through doing the work, through the discovery of rehearsal, um, through play, through interacting with the audience. Um, so acting is healing from life. Um, Acting is frustrating because it's a very jealous lover and it doesn't necessarily give back to you as much as you give to it. It's demanding of your time, of your energies. Um, it never stops. Um, but overall, I think the biggest thing for me is that acting is, is life, is love, is pain, is joy. Um, yeah. To prescribe, I mean, I don't like to prescribe a process on how to get into character because I'm a firm believer that you must always allow for the organic growth of the work. So allow the work to find itself, to discover itself. Don't prescribe what you think should be there. I mean, yes, there is work that needs to be done in terms of reading the play and finding out, um, you know, basic basic information that's within the text. Um, but the beauty about working with different directors, so for instance, if I'm working with, with James, who has been my, um, we've collaborated for many years now, since almost 10 years, it's our 10 year anniversary of our relationship this year. So working, working with him, um, it's different because him and I have a shorthand and so it's, it's quicker for us to get into the work and, and so we don't have to do the long process around uh, the roundabout process. But working with someone like Dr. John Gani, who is very, it's, it's beautiful how he's almost like a, a, a surgeon, how he's methodical about the text and he wants you to dissect it and understand every single word. Um, and so that's another different way of entering uh, the, the work. Um, but I like to take my guidance of my fellow collaborators and, and I don't believe in the hierarchy of you're the director, I'm the actor. Um, I guess because of the way that I've been raised in, in this work where we all collaborate and we, I bring something to the table and you bring something to the table and we figure it out. So my process is that. I, I believe in it being organic and allowing it to breathe and not prescribing my own stuff to it. So we go on to the rehearsal room and we discover stuff on the floor, we discover stuff while we're reading. I mean, when you work with, with, with um, Doc, you, you discover stuff about a word. I remember the first week of rehearsal was spent literally going word by word through the text and understanding, which can be painful and pedantic, but then when you, when you get onto the floor, you understand why you spend so much time on the word. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, actors need to be people who feel a lot. We are, we're sponges almost. Um, and that's what we need to always guard from because we take from the world and share. And, and so sometimes it, it can be incredibly overwhelming for you. Um, but social awareness is incredibly important because you learn from people, you reflect people. And so therefore you can't reflect what's just in your head. Then it's no longer um, about society, it's just about you, which is okay if that's the choice that you make, but I think the better choice is being socially aware of what's happening around the world, what's happening in your community. Um, I mean, now it's interesting, we're doing this play by Professor Zaxim Dar called The Dying Screams of the Moon, um, and this play was written post-apartheid 1994 roundabout, and it's never been performed before. And it's so prophetic that someone like Zaxim Da then saw that the issues that we have around race in this country, the issues that we have around land repatriations, the TRC project, its failings and its successes, 
it's so interesting that someone before s seeing what the country would be in 2016 or 20 odd years after democracy um, would be able to speak to these and that's the journey of the theater maker and the actor um, we're almost sage-like in the way that we're prophetic about the world and you wouldn't be able to do that if you weren't someone who's socially aware who has their pulse on society um, who ha rather who has their finger, finger on the pulse of society so social awareness is incredibly important I think my journey up until now both personal and professional has been testament to resilience um, and I think if I were to have a movie written about me I would want it to focus heavily on the resilience of the human spirit um, that you can go through the worst of worst times and you can have debilitating um, self-deprecating tendencies um, and you can still push through. I remember um, bumping, not bumping, because a lot of people come in and out of this theatre complex and I remember bumping into Paul Slabelevsky um, who was premiering his uh, latest play, I think it was the first play I'd written in 25 years, um, Suddenly a Storm. I had auditioned for him and Bobby Heaney. Then I knew I couldn't get into the part because it was specific that it needed someone who looked a certain way and I got that, but I just thought, you know what, I'm going to audition for this man. And I bumped into him and he said to me, you know what, after the audition, I decided that I'm going to write a play for you. And I thought, yes, you. If I could go back to Masasa in Port Elizabeth at Alexander Road High School, sitting at a desk, reading Saturday night at the palace uh, because she has an exam, a drama exam the following day. And I could tell her that one day Paul Slavilevsky is going to say to you, I'm going to write a play for you. I think she'd look at me and go, but you crazy. <laughs> um, so I think, I think my movie would be about resilience and um, about the, the audacity to dream, to be audacious enough to dream impossible, seemingly impossible dreams, and then trust that God, your ancestors, and the universe are going to fill in the blanks. And surprisingly, they do every time.